The situation at noon on June 13, 1863, found Ewell's Second Corps getting ready to assault the Union forces holding Pritchard's Hill and the ground around the Valley Turnpike. Milroy and his Union division found himself outnumbered at least two to one, and they had the unenviable task of delaying Ewell while at the same time defending both the Valley Turnpike and the Port Royal Turnpike. Ewell's goal was to take Pritchard's Hill by turning Milroy's right flank and then taking Winchester. So here we have Ewell's two divisions, Early on the left and Johnson on the right, getting ready to move into position to assault Pritchard's Hill. Hayes Brigade is getting into battle formation um, in the center.
who's finally activated, Robert H. Milroy. The Union forces are finally unfixed, so they can start moving around and planning their defense of Winchester here. Right here. out view here, looking and seeing what the options might be. I definitely want to kind of fire some shots at the rebels who look like they are going to assault Pritchard's Hill. And that's about all the Union can do. I think I'm going to take this cavalry and move it over and try to get behind the Union lines, um, just constantly harassing the, the flanks and the rear of the enemy. Always a good idea. Yule's core. We'll move Yule into a better position here, more centered, so he can um, get both his divisions, or yeah, get both. Try to get both his divisions in his command range, so he can pass on the morale check bonuses if need be. So we'll try to move Yule back into a better position there. Trying to see the line of sight of those Union guns, and trying to see what the best approach is. You want to, if you can get out of sight of those Union guns, you will take less fire. And just trying to get into position now. I'm going to take some some shots here from that 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 Union battery on Pritchard's Hill. So Yule's Corps is starting to make more of a frontal assault on Pritchard's Hill um, in hopes that it will keep the Union forces on the hill uh, occupied and Yule's left flank can get around and maybe trap the Union forces before they can retreat back to Winchester. But there might be some casualties involved with uh, that artillery fire from top of the hill there. reported that Union General Washington Lafayette Elliott, the brigade commander on Pritchard's Hill, said if the Confederates want this hill, then come and take it. True story. So 
So yeah, the Union guns are gonna... Milroy's gonna keep firing um, the guns as long as he possibly can. Um, but definitely, he's gonna pull a gun back um, in case things go bad. Try to save some um, equipment as much as possible, while at the same time forcing the rebels to, to pay some kind of price for assaulting the hill and trying to go up through the valley here. But yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough battle for the Union side in this early stage of the campaign. So Milroy will order General Eli, who is commanding the brigade on the left flank, to move closer to Pritchard's Hill, uh, while keeping the cavalry to guard the Port Royal Turnpike. So at the beginning of each turn, there is a report dialogue that tells you if any units um, routed or disordered. Here's our current casualties, some losses from those guns, um, nothing major. And the Confederates will keep moving their cavalry and get around that position on Pritchard's Hill. So if I hadn't mentioned earlier about um, one of the functions in the game is you can see what um, your field of fire is and visible hex um, and then that way you can see um, like in this case for the Confederates if what routes they can take so they are out of the range of those guns. So if they are hi highlighted in yellow they can get fired upon as long as they're in the field of fire of the guns they're visible to those guns so it's always a good thing to kind of look now of course the rebels are marching straight through the field of fire and are spotted by the artillery guns so there's always a chance that those guns will automatically fire on the rebels as they're moving so when you have the opportunity to move outside the site of the any kind of firing or guns um, it is always advisable to do so
I'll place my knapsack on my back, my rifle on my shoulder. I'll march away to the firing line, kill that Yankee soldier. I'll kill that Yankee soldier. I'll march away to the firing line. So the rebel frontal assault is actually doing a decent job of holding the Union force in place because the Union just keeps wanting to fire at, at a rebel unit coming in. Now, they're suffering casualties, but if the Confederate goal is to try to surround as much of the Union Army on Pritchard's Hill, then it might work.